In today's video, we are going to be talking about the markets division within an investment bank. So when you hear about sales and trading, there's so many different roles within the markets or the trading floor of an investment bank. And so today we're going to be discussing what does a salesperson on the trading floor actually do? What does a trader actually do? What does a sales trader or what does that role entail? Who are and what do the structurers do and what is a quant and what do they do? What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Afsal Hussain and you can find out a bit more about me through the social media links below or you can check out my website which is www.afsalhussain.com. If you're not already, make sure you're following me on Instagram and LinkedIn for more frequent and daily posts. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the markets division within an investment bank. So when you hear about sales and trading, there's so many different roles within the markets or the trading floor of an investment bank. And so today we're going to be discussing what does a salesperson on the trading floor actually do? What does a trader actually do? What does a sales trader or what does that role entail? Who are and what do the structurers do and what is a quant and what do they do? So if you've got an internship in the markets division in summer 2019, you will hopefully have a better idea of, you know, what the different roles and individuals do across the trading floor. If you're a pre-university student or a uni student or even a graduate, hopefully this high level overview of these roles will be useful for you. Okay, if you're a salesperson, your primary role is going to be being on the phone to clients. Now the main reason for doing that is trying to build relationships with these clients and trying to get those clients to place trades with your organization or your bank. So let's say you work for Barclays Investment Bank or Barclays Capital and you're speaking to a lot of your clients on the phone, your job as a salesperson is to try and get them, convince them or persuade them to place the trades that they're interested in with your organization. So through one of your trading friends on your trading floor at Barclays. Salespeople are usually split or divided among different client groups or regions or by products. So when we say different client groups, it could be institutional investors. So really large organizations in the asset management space, for example. So you've got sovereign wealth funds, governments, you've got pension schemes, insurance companies. So these are all institutional clients. Then you've got large companies, so corporates. And then you've got retail investors and you've got high net worth individuals, so wealthy individuals private banking. Then we've got regions. So you might be a salesperson for the Benelux region. You might be a salesperson for the Middle East and North Africa or MENA region. You might be a salesperson specifically focused on African clients, or you might be focused on UK or Europe. So salespeople can be split across regions, across client types, and then also you will be split across products. So you might be a salesperson focusing on a specific asset class, equities, but if we dig deeper, you might be focused on growth equities, or you might be focused on equities in a specific region. Alternatively, you might be a fixed income salesperson specifically on bonds that are in emerging markets. You might be a salesperson working with in the foreign exchange team or the currencies team or on a specific interest rate desk. You can't be a salesperson for all products within the markets division within investment banks there are so many different asset classes and when you dig deeper into those there are so many subsectors within these asset classes. Now you're going to be a salesperson for one of those subsectors or an asset class um, selling a specific product to clients. So when a client calls you and says they're interested in emerging market equities, they want to speak to the right salesperson in the emerging market equities desk who will hopefully convince them to place their trades with the emerging market equity traders. It's important to note that as a salesperson, you know, you're going to be on the phone a lot. You're building a lot of client relationships. You need to know what's going on in the markets. You need to be kept up to date with relevant news. But depending on your product that you're focused on, your work or your conversations with the clients will differ. As a salesperson, it's important for you to build a relationship with the client. Now that relationship starts off maybe on the phone, but you want to make it stronger. And so you're expected to go out and you know, wine and dine or spend some quality time with your clients. That could be at sporting events, at any events that they've expressed interest in. But basically, you know, at least once or twice a week, you're going to be going out, meeting clients over, you know, a meal, dinner, lunch, whatever it might be to kind of strengthen that relationship. Okay, if you're a trader, you're primarily known for market making. Now, some of you might 
be wondering what is market making market making is literally that you're creating a market for buyers and sellers and you're quoting buy prices so if someone wants to buy a product a financial product and you've got it you're going to quote them a buy price if someone wants to sell it you're quoting them a sell price now there's going to be a difference between the buy price and the sell price and we call that difference the spread usually market makers or if you're on a tr trading floor at an investment bank you're creating a market and you're making a profit from the spread between the buy price and the sell price on the flip side there is proprietary trading now this is more of the case at hedge funds and smaller investment banks not necessarily the big investment banks proprietary trading is basically taking the firm's money not making markets but trading buying and selling financial securities in order to make a profit so you do your research you do your fundamental analysis which is looking at companies balance sheets and all of that you do your technical analysis which is looking at graphs and charts and you come out with a conclusion and you decide whether to invest in a interest rate or a stock of a company or a currency or various other financial instruments and you do that because you you have a view on this financial product you think it's going to increase in value and so you buy low sell high or you think it's going to decrease in value and so you do this thing called shorting which we can do a whole separate video on leave a comment if you'd like that video um, and we'll talk about that later so there's proprietary trading which is less common at the big bulge bracket investment banks and then you've got market making where you're making a profit or you're making a commission from the spread of the bid and offer or the buy and sell prices quoted as a market maker if any of that is unclear simple google search investopedia will explain it better than i have in this video so as a trader you're getting in very early in london for example london is very good because it's kind of like at the perfect point in the world from a time perspective the time zone we're in it just works perfectly for the u.s markets for the asian markets and so we're kind of like bang in the middle the markets here open at 8 a.m and they close at 4 30 p.m so traders make sure they get in before an hour or two before the markets open in order to do their research to make sure they are up to date with all the news that's happened overnight all the news that's happened in the u.s markets asia markets all over the world they catch up with their colleagues over coffee breakfast whatever it is and they prepare for the market open at 8 a.m in london now once the market opens it's usually quite volatile so all the traders or most of the traders market opens everyone's kind of in the market's busy but some traders sit on the side let the volatility kind of ease off and then do their research they come up with ideas they try and look at the market for different opportunities if i'm a trader focused on g10 currencies then i will be looking at opportunities looking at press releases looking at data releases looking at news that comes out into the market and seeing is there an is there an opportunity for me to make a market in this asset class or in this subset of an asset class in order to provide value to my clients and make a bit of commission on the side now one thing to note is similar to salespeople depending on the product that you're working in or the asset class that you focus on your role can differ quite a bit so if you're a trader focused on fixed income securities then company related news or company earnings won't have as much of a impact on your role unless you're a credit trader because credit relays back to corporations and companies how strong mm -hmm. are companies performing and how strong are their credit positions whereas if you are focused on equities of technology companies then when apple releases its data or quarterly earnings that's going to have a huge impact on you as a trader on the flip side because you're a fixed income derivatives trader you're going to be more focused on macroeconomic news so where interest rates are going where if there's any recent news from the bank of england or, or the central banks on interest rates as opposed to company earnings who an equity trader focused on tech companies might be more conscious of thank you for your time if you haven't already do consider subscribing make sure you turn on the bell so you get notified when i release a new video and I will see you next time. Peace.